Throughout human history, man has struggled with the suffering of existence and the agony of being. But no disease has been more destructive to the human spirit than the horrors of unconscious bias. But what is unconscious bias? Unconscious bias is the unquestionable fact that we all harbor deep-rooted biases and prejudices in the depths of our subconscious that collectively manifest into large-scale oppressive societal forces. These horrors of our subconscious directly impact the- oh wait, that one is totally acceptable, even consciously. Right, so these horrors of our subconscious directly impact the fragile self-esteem and emotional well-being of those around us. So where do these biases come from? Basically, unconscious bias is spread by living in a culture with an imperial or conquering history. But it's not exactly genetic, because there need not be a direct ancestral line to any specific imperialist. Instead, it seems to be somehow transmitted through similarities in melanin levels. But even then, not everyone seems susceptible to infection, because the disease seems to be primarily concentrated in these regions of the world, regardless of one's melanin levels. Obviously, empires and conquests have taken place all over the world by many different cultures, but it seems that if an empire's conquest took place outside of those regions, then its descendants don't seem to be nearly as susceptible to infection. Furthermore, even if those cultures have been somewhat infected, their infections aren't considered problematic because their imperialist actions are actually an indirect consequence of the imperialism that originated in the hazard zones even if they took place prior to the Hazard Zone's empires. So somehow, the infection is not constrained to moving forwards in time. But one still has to be careful, because even if you originate from outside the Hazard Zones, if you spend a significant amount of time in the Hazard Zones, you will become permanently infected, regardless of your ancestors' actions or your melanin levels. So it's transmitted sort of pseudo-genetically slash geographically via some sort of yet-to-be-discovered ether. One of the most emotionally detrimental consequences to unconscious bias is the oppression of microaggressions. A few examples of this are asking where someone is from, assuming you know where someone is from, noticing or taking into consideration one's skin tone, not being aware of one's skin tone, holding a door open for a woman, not holding a door open for a woman, asking how someone's name is pronounced, and mispronouncing a person's name. There are many more, of course. Essentially, it is the scientifically proven fact that what was once viewed as the common paranoia of teenage girls who believed everyone's actions and words were actually passive-aggressive backhanded slights motivated by hatred for them is not paranoia at all, but in fact an uncanny and accurate perception into the true subconscious of the human mind. As a result, we must all be aware that the seemingly innocent niceties and observations of other people are actually oppressive and deteriorating our souls. But don't give up hope just yet, because your unconscious bias can be detected and even corrected thanks to the implicit association test. The IAT is essentially a word association test that looks at how long it takes you to rapidly associate different words. The claim is that if it takes a person a fraction of a second longer to associate, for example, black with good versus white with good, then that person is unconsciously biased against black people. Now, is there any evidence that this time differential is in fact measuring unconscious biases? Well, the IAT's creators have stated so on fiat, so it's true. Now, unfortunately, the results cannot be replicated reliably, even by the low replication standards of the field of psychology. Meaning that if the same person takes the test multiple times, the results are rather inconsistent. <laughs> Furthermore, the results have not been shown to reliably predict behavior. <laughs> so even if one does possess these biases deep in their subconscious, they don't seem to have any effect on the world around them. That's okay though because the authors of the IAT have told us that even statistically small, unreliable, and invalid results have a large effect on humanity as a whole. So we need not apply the generally accepted and already low standards of the field of psychology to their tests. And only their tests, of course. If you'd like more info on the IAT, there are a plethora of papers available on Google Scholar. If that's too much work, 
This article by Jesse Singal, with references, is a good summary of the experiments involving the IAT. Links to the few papers in this video can be found in the description. Now that your unconscious bias has been diagnosed and established, you can have your brain corrected with unconscious bias training, where self-appointed experts in HR will peer deep into your mind to root out the cancerous thoughts, tweak them in line, and reprogram your brain to the correct thoughts. In conclusion, social change activists, in a desperate need to find an evil to combat, search for biases in the justice system, but apparently could not find sufficient evidence of systematic prejudice. So they then looked in people's behavior, but again failed to find significant biases. Nor could they find sufficient biases in people's words. They couldn't even find it in people's thoughts, so they had to resort to claiming it was rampant in our subconscious. And how can you refute them? You don't know what goes on in your subconscious. Of course, neither do they, but that detail can be circumvented with the IAT. Throughout history, thought crime has been punished numerous times, but now, for the first time, we have subconscious thought crime corrections. Even Stalin and Torquemada never crossed that line. And at least with them, you could repent your heretical thoughts and maybe be pardoned. But how can you repent thoughts you're not even aware of? By the way, if we are to have our subconscious corrected, wouldn't it make sense to have our dreams corrected as well? So fear not and be grateful for diversity councils and HR supervisors who tirelessly and selflessly strive to monitor you in order to save you from your own mind. Please do your part in combating unconscious bias and be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.